Okay. Did I say September the 3rd? What did I say? 16th the 3rd. I heard the 13th. Okay. Good. Okay. It's September the 3rd. And thank you to everyone who made the peach social happen and for everyone who attended. It had delicious desserts and conversation and it was really well appreciated by all those who made it happen. On August the 30th at 1.30 in the fellowship room, there's going to be an afternoon at the movies. This event was rescheduled due to a conflict with the defibrillator training. And living is the story of an ordinary man who makes a supreme effort to turn his life into something wonderful. And there's also going to be a discussion about Burnham Wood, the summer eco-mystery, and it will be rescheduled. Please email or call Reverend Barb if you'd like to be a part of this discussion group. And there's going to be a new walking group on the last Wednesday of the month, and that's August the 30th at 8.30. There's also a notice from Silver Spire that there's going to be a music workshop with Jason Locke on September the 9th from 9 a.m. to 12. It's a free event and there's lunch provided at Silver Spire. And to register, you need to email Lynn Hansberger. Her address will be on the flyer and the flyer will be posted just outside of Judith's office. And moving to, well, let's stick with announcements. Does anyone else have an announcement? Um, I just First of all, um, the flowers that you see in front of you are from Faye Fairburn's funeral that was last Thursday at 11 o'clock. And for those of you who have not met Faye, but have met Linda Eichfuss, um, Faye was Linda's older sister and really second mother. Uh, so we had a wonderful celebration of life for a woman who lived and loved her faith deeply. So that's what those flowers are for or from. Uh, we have an announcement um, that uh, Peggy Hill died. Peggy Hill, um, she died on Saturday, August the 19th. And that there will be a small family gathering, but that's actually going to be held in Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. So please continue to hold uh, their family in your prayers. Did you have an announcement? Okay, I will, I'm going to repeat that, David, so that... Um, uh, I also, I think that... Um, Word has made it around also, but this is uh, very significant um, uh, that Wayne Tester died on August the 18th. And um, Wayne Tester was a very active and significant member of um, Mountain View United Church, but he was also a real pillar of the community. And uh, if you ever had an opportunity to sit down and listen to his stories about his dental practice, um, that was a real vocation for him. It was really part of how he lived his faith. So as we continue, he was also a great photographer. But that was actually how I first met him, is that he came over to take my photo for the website. Um, the family, you can imagine, it's a very large family, and they are all over the place. Uh, so right now they are looking at October 14th um, for the, the funeral. I don't have any other details than that, but I will let you know. Um, and I just wanted to repeat what David um, just said, is that our... When's the date for the Vista cards? Next Sunday, December 3rd. <laughs> this is very fitting for the sermon this morning. Um, yes, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Thank you very much. Are there any other announcements? Um, announcements for celebrations, I'll start with one. Corrine Strupp is going to have a birthday on Tuesday. Happy birthday. Are there any other celebrations?
and she's announcing the big one. <laughs> Any other announcements? Okay, let us prepare for work. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, congratulations. Okay, Diane announced that they are celebrating their 49th wedding anniversary on Tuesday. Sorry? <laughs> on the 31st. <laughs> it's, it's catching. <laughs> it's like COVID. Let us prepare for worship. I think I have it on as well, too. It's funny, I had a brief thought with the microphone and the flowers here for the funeral. I wondered if anybody could actually see me. <laughs> <clears throat> but as we move further into our worship service this morning, we are grateful and uh, come here in gratitude for the land that we gather and worship on. This land that is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and neutral peoples who have for thousands of years lived on this land, honoring the creator and living with respect and creation. We acknowledge the stewardship of the land and their relationship with the land and its plants and animals and the lakes and streams with their life forms throughout the ages. We accept the responsibility we have to seek and nurture relationship with indigenous communities to continue learning from our history and to live in right relationship with one another and all of creation. And before we go into our centering music, you know, one of the, the big discussions that we're having right now about living into our right relations is, does have to do with learning. <clears throat> it does have to do with uh, going th through things uh, in our community and um, taking responsibility for the things that we, uh, for uh, understanding the history. Um, one of the pieces of that though is that we are able to do this comfortably in our own spaces and um, really have a choice as to whether, you know, we want to live this out or not. And what we are being uh, encouraged to do in all of our, uh, the United Church has a big a lot of work on anti-racism right now, uh, colonial structures and right relations, is to actually leave our buildings and join in in things that the indigenous communities are already doing. And, uh, and you know, really part of that is when we invite people to do things in, we're actually asking them to work twice as hard to educate us rather than going out to what they're already doing. So in the city of St. Catharines, the weekend of September 10th is an indigenous cultural weekend. There'll be a powwow, there will be concerts, there will be learning events. And I really encourage you, uh, this is all through the Performing Arts Center, to take a look at the PAC uh, schedule of events and uh, see what you can go out and attend. And uh, I'd love to hear about it. So. I meant to bring the schedule with me, but uh, it's probably in my office. Uh, and now let us, uh, in our seated comfortable position, uh, join together in our centering music. No. Thank you.
If um, you've been here for the last few weeks, we took a wonderful break last week from the sermon series. Um, but in some ways, having Jeff Learmont come and have a playful time of a pulpit exchange was really a wonderful way to play into a, a sermon series on change. So we continue today with our worship series on change, Reshaped, reminding us that we were created for change. The first two weeks of our series helped us examine and expand our own understanding about our capacity for change. And we were reminded that the Creator God made us for change and that we are being made new always from the inside out by the ever creative spirit of God within us. Our spiritual growth is deeply connected to our ability to embrace change. I'm not sure that's always good news, so I'm just going to say it again. Our spiritual growth is deeply connected to our ability to embrace change. And I know with adults, sometimes there's a bit of a resistance, but uh, when I, um, the worship service is based around having a piece of Play-Doh in your hand. <laughs> and so at some point, I'll, uh, if you wish to bring it out now, um, at some point, we'll go around and pass it out again. Uh, and um, you're welcome to start playing with it now or just have it ready uh, for the end of our reflection time. So are we ready for our invitation to worship? There we go. So if you've ever had Play-Doh out too long without tending it, and maybe this is a little, uh, a little fable here, that um, Anne Howie made this beautiful little cat the first Sunday and she didn't want to cram it back into the, um, into the container. <laughs> so, so it's very dry and its head has fallen off. <laughs> so, <laughs> so word to the wise, stay flexible. Mm. Uh, so you know when it gets dried and cracked and falls apart. But if we keep letting go of what was and, what keep, and keep working on what is next, will keep growing amazing things. In our scripture today, Jesus asks us to let go of life as it is in order to create and multiply a love that is in eternal. What feels like chaos or recklessness of ch or the recklessness of change is the breaking open of the possibility of the sprouting of new life. Today in our scripture, Jesus says that we can't always hold on to our old ways and we can't be afraid of letting go so that we can grow into something even more beautiful. So let's enter into our worship time, opening our hearts and our minds to the possibility of the presence, of fully knowing the loving presence of God in our midst.
please be seated. I always think that a piece of breaking open my heart in the morning is on the second verse of a hymn when the choir breaks into harmony. It just, uh, it's always uh, new and fresh. on some of these packages, I'm pretty sure, from 1950. I'm going to work on that after. We know and trust that the presence of Christ with us is, uh, and the light of Christ is with us in each moment. So as I said earlier today in our scriptures, Jesus says that we can't always hold on to our old ways, and we can't be afraid of letting go so that we can grow into something even more beautiful. And we've been uh, leaning into popular images in the last little while. First, we had Gumby, which uh, m most of us recognized. And then we went um, to the Pixar movie, uh, Inside Out. And this today, I, I'm going to ask you to guess what our theme is going to be. And it was a very popular movie. Um, most of us could sing the words to this incredibly famous song uh, by a queen who lived someplace very cold, and one of her gifts was to be able to uh, turn things into ice or things very cold. I heard it already? Frozen. Frozen. Very good. It was the movie Frozen. Um, has anybody seen that movie? Okay. Like most of the Disney Pixar movies, uh, they are made for kids and, and young families, but there is something... Uh, for everybody in those movies, and there's quite an interesting folk theme that runs through this one. Uh, so it's really reminding us that if we stay the same forever, it's like being frozen in time, like the frozen villages in the movie. And we're going to do just a little relaxation um, uh, exercise now. And I actually learned this when I was in about grade five. I had an amazing phys ed teacher that taught us some relaxation techniques that now at 57, I still use. And so I want you to get yourself comfortable in your seat. If it's comfortable for you to close your eyes, please do. And now start with your toes, okay, and your feet. Now take a deep breath in. And as always, with relaxation exercises, we always want to just check in with our breath every once in a while, make sure that we're still breathing. So with your feet, I want you to clench them as hard as you can. Tighten those muscles and hold. Scrunch, 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 and now let go. And now your calf muscles, scrunch them as tight as you can, even tighter, and hold, and now let go. Now your thighs, scrunch, tighter, tighter, hold, and now let go. Now your whole sort of, uh, I guess, thorax, your stomach. Clench it as tight as you can. And tighter. And now let go. And we'll just do one more. Take your hands and your arms and clench them as tight as you can. And now let go. Okay, and I'll bring you back. If you were doing that at home in your bed or you were having trouble sleeping, you can go through your entire, through your eyelids, your ears, your cheeks, and um, 
at the end of this, I, I often find I'm relaxed enough. I, if I have the patience to do it, I'm relaxed enough to fall asleep. So to, what was that experience like of letting go? It was good, yep. Relaxing, yep. I found that I could take in a slightly deeper breath after that, and it's just an interesting con uh, contrast to being very tight and holding on to letting go. So because change is a part of life, just like it's most fun to play again and again, so, um, so I just want to go back here. So it's okay. Um, so we, we kind of realized in the last time we did this that it's part of our normal human reaction to be afraid of change that will go through fear and anxiety and doubt and, and that that's okay, but we do have to get to a stage where we can, we can let go. And because change is part of a life, um, it can be wonderful um, and even especially wonderful because of the changes that we, can, we, we go through and that we can actually thank God for creating us and a world that is ever-changing for helping us when we need help to let go, and we can thank God for being with us and helping us through each day and each and every life. And in our scripture today, we're gonna to talk about what that looks like uh, to let go in life and how this letting go is so important in the process of change. Um, I'm gonna invite Donna up to read the scripture, and as she's coming up, one of the changes that you're hearing is that we're reading all of our scripture this week from uh, the message. And the message is a Bible that's not really a translation. It's a paraphrase of the Bible written by Eugene Peterson. It's written to be more read like a storybook. And it's written in contemporary language and uses contemporary images. So hopefully with this change in scripture, we might hear the message a little bit differently. So thank you, Donna. Good morning. I don't, am I on? Oh, okay. Loving God, pre let us pray. Loving God, prepare our hearts to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, so that in hearing we may be ready to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the reading comes from John 12, verses 20 to 26. There were some Greeks, Greeks in town who had come up to worship at the feast. They approached Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. Sir, we want to see Jesus. Can you help us? Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip together told Jesus, and Jesus answered, Time's up. The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts, sprouts and rep reproduces itself many times over. In the same way, anyone who holds on to life just as it is destroys that life. But if you let go, reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. If anyone wants to serve me, then follow me. Then you'll be where I am, ready to serve at a moment's notice. The Father will honor and reward you who serves me. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Amen. That was beautiful. So if you're joining us today, maybe for the first time in a while, um, again, make sure that you have a tub of, of Play-Doh. Um, and you might even want to just pop the top right now. Oh, we've got some uh, Play-Doh deliverers that have just skipped into action. Uh, and, you know, it's an interesting thing. I, I recalled having challenges this when I was at school. I had a lot of classmates that doodled, and I thought, how rude. <laughs> and, then, and then what I realized is that some people actually can listen better when they're doing something with their hands. So that even if it's just for that, playing with your Play-Doh or doodling, uh, sometimes can be a wonderful tool to take things in around you. But really we're doing this um, because for summer worship. And because summer worship is just a time to be a little bit more playful. We're a lot more flexible when we're laughing. So, and so as we're talking about Play-Doh, and I'm going to make a reach that we're maybe talking about sculpting, um, it's a good time for me to share a quote um, from Pablo Picasso. And Pablo Picasso is one of the most influential artists of the 20th century. And he's famous for being known as the father of Cubism. You might also know his Blue Period. And he actually had several distinct artistic periods uh, throughout his, his artistic career. And he was constantly changing and innovating and pushing him house, himself to discover new expressions of art. And one of his most famous quotes is this. Every act of creation is first of all an act of destruction. Some of you know that quote. Every act of creation is first of all an act of destruction. And in fact, there's a group of theologians, mostly young theologians working in the United States, who are called deconstructionist theologians. And I suspect that many of you here are deconstructionist theologians. That the faith of your childhood, particularly if you came from a tradition that proposed that there was only one answer to every question, or one interpretation of every scripture, that you too have been through a process of deconstruction, and that exploring a faith that speaks more deeply into your experiences of one another, your experiences of God, was necessary for you to stay in the faith. Then in order to live as a follower of Jesus and as a disciple of love, that a new understanding of your faith was necessary. And for many of you, for many of us, that was a very painful process. Sometimes it meant leaving a community. And you had, we all or had to learn or unlearn in order to grow. And the key is when we hear deconstruction, it's not just about destroying. It's about taking things apart and maybe uh, destruction but not for destruction's sake. It's to um, make space for growth, not to destroy, but to reclaim a faithful way of walking in the footsteps of Jesus. And Picasso knew that in order to create something new, a beloved, even famous way of painting had to give way, had to deconstruct in order to construct something new. Picasso also famously said, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. That ideally, childhood, in childhood, we are free to explore. We are free to experience joy, to make mistakes, to laugh and to wonder. And Picasso had experienced and witnessed the same phenomenon that many of us have, that often as we age, we become more afraid of letting go. And Jesus himself asked us to remain childlike, not childish, but childlike. But even as Christians, 
to whom the cycle of death to new life, death to rebirth, the cycle of being cracked open to make space for something new is at the very core of our teaching. And yet in many ways, we actually seem to have the hardest time with change. I love what uh, Brene Brown says. We all want transformation. We just don't want to change. <laughs> Yet change is all around us, the cycle of nature, one of the most profound metaphors that God has laid before us. The Apostle Paul in the book of Romans was on to something when he said that nature was the first sacred text, the first way that we know God's ways. And poet Alex Ely says it this way, there will be a moment when you will bloom fully, then wilt only to bloom again. If we can learn anything from flowers, it's that resilience is born even when we feel like we are dying. In the scripture that Donna read today, Jesus asks us to let go of life as it is in order to create and grow the love that is internal. Our reading this morning said this, anyone who holds on to life just as it is destroys that life. But if you let go, reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. And it is a head-scratching passage for sure. In the NIV or in the NRSV, it would say, um, oh, what is it? Sorry, I should have written it down. But it, it's, it's if, we, if we hold on to the life that we love, it destroys life. Um, but if we let go of the life that we hate, we will have eternal life. It uses some very strong, strong language. And so what might this mean? That if we hold on to life just as it is, we destroy it. That if we hold on to life just as it is, we successfully prevent change. We prevent conflict, we prevent, prevent pain, and then we will find that we have no life at all. We will chase comfort, safety, and I think this is a really important one. David uh, shared a, a, an article with me about uh, the political landscape in the United States. If we hold on to superiority at all cost, we will lose life. I want to be very clear that Jesus is not asking us to choose suffering. God is not causing suffering, but when we live our lives for what truly matters, living as God has fully created us, no matter what the cost, there is a possibility of suffering. Suffering is not the main goal, but it can be a byproduct. And just as God lifted Jesus into new life, God is here for us. What might feel like chaos or recklessness of change is the breaking open of possibility and the sprouting of new life. This is what we mean by our mission statement, saying that we want to live God's love in the world, broken, open, and free. To follow Jesus, of course, can be difficult. Uh, Christians are often unpopular, <laughs> uh, countercultural. I think countercultural if we live it truly, and full of discomfort. Jesus is asking his followers, us, to train our eyes on, our Easter eyes, on what is truly true and lasting. This passage is part of Jesus' public farewell words, so it's, it's important, I think, to set it into the text. Jesus has just been anointed by Mary, and we know that he, in the Gospel of John, he absolutely knows what's coming. He knows that this little, uh, or this, this story about dying into new life is about his own death. But it's also about what will sprout after his death perhaps even because of his death, in the lives and work of disciples who will carry on his work. The disciples 2,000 year, years ago and the disciples that sit here in this place today. This week, our sacred story calls us to wonder, how do we let go of old expectations 
expectations about surety and results so that we might wake, may, make way for the change that can shift the narrative focus of our lives, of our churches, of the world around us into one of lasting vitality, abundant life. How do we live a story where love reigns? What needs to be let go of? What needs to be de deconstructed? And Jesus at this moment in the story, in the Gospel of John, is ready to go with the flow of what he knows is going to happen. He knows that, God, that in God's reality, to die is not the end of the story, but it's the beginning. And so people who have studied change dynamics tell us that the cycle of chains often involves us moving, we heard from sadness and grief and loss, through fear, and then we come to the yellow light, uh, doubt and discomfort. So I'm going to get John to pull up our, oh, he's got it up, amazing. That the seed in the ground that falls into the ground is actually in the dark. It has no idea what God has for, in store. You can imagine that it's a little quiet and lonely down there. And the seed cannot see the possibility of, and, and we cannot see the possibility of what's happening below the surface. This can be a time of anxiety, of overwhelm. And one of the most important things that spoke into my life was it's also a, a time where we're not very productive. And it can also be seen as a time of sitting or resting. Sometimes a little stuck and unproductive where things don't quite feel right and we quite can't quite imagine the future. Yet it's okay that the seed is being planted. The seed is under the earth. We can't see what's happening below the surface and we want to know. But maybe that need is rest. A time to trust that God is at work in unseen ways and places within ourselves and in our community. So rest is productive. Whose mother said, go to bed, it will all be better in the morning. And to my chagrin, it was always true, or 90% of the time true. There's something active happening in our bodies when we rest. Stillness allows for other processes to be at work. Um, and I wonder if you've had an experience like this, but it's a good metaphor. So you're sitting at your computer trying to download something, trying to upload some material, and it's taking forever. And in fact, it seems like nothing is happening. Uh, and it's actually working uh, so that you, okay, so, sorry. So in fact, it seems like something, nothing is happening. And so you continue to press buttons and try to open other tabs and do all of those kinds of things. Okay, I'm hearing some, it's not just me. Um, and then maybe in the middle of that, your computer starts to reboot, you know, 9,001, you know, reboots. Then in the midst of your exasperation, true story, a six-year-old sits down beside you and says, you know, if you keep clicking on things, that program is never going to open. <laughs> You're just slowing things down. And then, of course, after a size ways glance, I got up and walked away from the computer. And in fact, the whole thing loaded. And this technology is very much a metaphor that happens to us. When everything is happening to it once, we, don't, we want to act and solve it. We don't want to give it time to let things upload or download and be fully there for us to, um, to deal with the issue. Um, or as Elsa sings, you could probably do this with me, let it go. And so you see in our chart there, we're in the orange zone this week, anxiety confused, unproductive. And the danger zone is not something that we have to go through. It's just for us to be aware that it's there. So if we don't sort of allow that uploading or that rest or the play, then we get stuck in the red, right? So it's a loop. We go back to fear, cautious, paralyzed, resentment, skeptical, resistance. We go and, and we can just stay in, in one, two, and three. So this period of rest and stillness uh, and play um, is a really important uh, part. And if you look, it's almost like this is our resurrection story here, this three-day cycle that we go from 
from anxiety, confused and unprotective, to anticipation, to resourceful, to energized, and to allow those things to happen. And to remind ourselves that at some point, everything changes. In the movie Frozen, Elsa is hiding behind her true self until she cannot do that anymore. She finally lets go of her fear and anxiety and leans into who she is created to be. And this is a universal folk metaphor of, of each one of us having a power inside us that we're afraid of. And until we let go and allow ourselves to be strange and beautifully wonderful as we are, uh, it takes a lot of energy to resist a lot of energy to resist. Instead, if we just take a few steps back and let go for a while, we might just find that we too can have a breakthrough rather than a breakdown. Like the seed in the ground, we must be allowed to shelter of the, allow ourselves the shelter of the dark earth, out of sight for a time and undisturbed, to hear the call of what we were created to do and break open and grow towards the light. Doing nothing, deeply listening, is often, especially in our culture, one of the most difficult parts of change. It's hard to do as individuals, and it's hard to do as a community. And as disciples of Jesus, we must not cling to what is, but learn to let go of the things that are holding us back. Finding and living fully into the life of God as individuals, as a church and in our communal life. And just one last illustration. I was reading some CBC reports last night and it's just getting to the end of a time where municipal leaders are gathering. And politicians are paying attention to an initiative that in London, Ontario, where they've developed a whole community systems response to address the housing crisis. And people are so impressed by the level of collaboration if you've ever worked in social services, it's a very competitive environment. So we have this new level of collaboration, including people from all across the sector and people with lived experience leading and advocating for the process. The article says uh, that there is no manual for this entire system. They said flat out, it's not gonna be perfect. but what we actually want to do is get to a better place. Anyone who holds on to life just as it is destroys that life. But if you let it go reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. And we do need to let go. I, I think right now we are bearing witness to holding on to an unsustainable way of life. Let go of the speed, and take time to listen. Let go of old expectations to discover new prospects. Let go of old ideas to wonder about new possibilities. Let go of what was to consider what could be. Let go of all that and let it be. To trust that God is at work and with us through it all, desiring for, longing for, an experience of what might be possible. So if you do have your Play-Doh, you're going to pop it open. Just going to take a little bit. So today, I invite you, if you wish, to use the Play-Doh to create a representation of seeds that are waiting to be planted or broken open. And as you create them, think about concrete examples of what is possible in your life and in your community. Sometimes just getting the container open is the, oh, the only change we're asking for. <laughs> So think of those seeds. What are the elements of a healthy life? Do you know when we're laughing, it's almost impossible to hold on 
right? It's one of the, uh, the physical spaces where our body is freest. What are the elements of a healthy life? What are the elements of a healthy faith community? What does it mean to nurture healthy growth? In your life, or in the life of the faith community, is growth having more people in the pews? Is growth increasing our givings? Is growth spiritual, a deepening of your faith life, of our communal faith life together? Even if you have no idea what seeds are waiting to be sprouted, simply allow the shaping of the clay to be your prayer of willingness to let go into the possibilities. I do believe that God has called each one of us to this place, to this time. It's a remarkable synchronicity that all of us coming from all walks of life have come into this door and sat down together, willing to be in community. I believe that God plants the seeds of a renewed life deep within us. May we listen, may we learn, reflect and act so that the seeds will bear fruit beyond our wildest dreams. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Now you can hear me. Thank you, John. As we have many gifts from God, we may share joys, concerns, and celebration in our life. Now we offer from our hard work, please accept our offerings and give us your blessing on our daily life. Now, let us bring our gifts to Lord Jesus. Generous and loving God, we thank you for your blessings without number. We bless you for the beauty of creation, for day and night, for spring, summer, fall, and winter. We bless you for protecting us in our weakness and renewing our strength of spirit. We praise you for sending Jesus to be among us, for his life on earth, his sufferings and death. Grant, O oh God, that our hearts may grow in thankfulness for these and all your gifts of grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Creator God, let us lead us our faith, may see the promises you give us, and look to God alone, laugh at impossibilities, and talk to ourselves. Okay, thank you, John. Help us to find some way to be in contact with the little ones, the nobodies, and get in touch with the people who are of no account so we may find ourselves the broken character of almost all of reality. And then create their laughter and smiles. Our Creator God, help the persons who have no enough daily food and the persons who are in hospital for long-term care. Teach us how to be little. Renew our family life. Renew the world in the love of Jesus. And renew 
our community of faith. O oh God, help those who are disabled and let them not live under an illusion of seeing themselves in the edge of society, but see as themselves. Help the people who are in prison for whatever reason or whatever they did, see themselves as to be dignity of a human being. They remind us we are also imprisoned and tapped. O oh God, help us free our trapped situation. They remind us that we are also one step away. Any moment of a crippledness help the people with mental disabilities who painfully remind us we really aren't very smart. We all occasionally see how incapable we are. Help us even red light in our spiritual journey to turn it to green light and help us to look at the no one take out the joy based on something within us that God gave us already. You said, if you serve me, Father will reward you, O oh God. There are some people who left their family home and go around the secular world to enjoy the false life with money like a prodigal son. In the gospel parable of the seas, fill us with life so that we can receive the words of life that you offer in deep our consciousness Help us meditate your grace comes to our hearts every day through other human beings with a sensate experience. Help us go the way of cross as Jesus did so we can follow you as your true Christians. Help some people who have an experience of judgment or an experience of a betrayal, give them sound mind. O oh God, give us also the spirit for common good and go beyond our private comfort zone so we may give profound commitment to the common good in our life journey at this moment. We pray in the name of Jesus, who lead us to build the kingdom of God in the life of our family and community. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the peace of God and the blessing of Jesus keep your hearts and mind. The blessing of Holy Trinity be with you and remain with you all words. We may hold on to the light of Jesus. As he said, we are light of the world. Now let us go forth in the name of Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God.